Welcome back. Now I'm going to be doing question number eight from the Mechanics 1 M1 October 2019, the International A level at Excel paper. Um, in this question, the horizontal unit vectors i and j um, are directed due east and due north, respectively. So i is going in that direction and j is going in that direction. Okay, one unit each. And Let's just get this. All right. Two speedboats um, and position vectors are given relative to a fixed origin O. Two speedboats, A and B, are each moving with constant velocity. The velocity of A is 20 km per hour due west. And the velocity of B is 40 km per hour on a bearing of 150 degrees. The boats are modeled as particles. At noon, the position vector of A is 60 i kilometers and B is at the origin. At time t hours after noon, the position vector of A is r kilometers and the position vector of B is s kilometers. Part A, find the velocity of B in the form pi plus qj kilometers per hour. So we're asked to find the velocity of B. So we need to find the information related to the velocity of B. Okay, and they tell us here that the velocity of B is 40 km per hour on a bearing of 150 degrees. So the 40 km per hour is the magnitude of the velocity and the 150 degrees bearing is its direction. So that's one way of giving a, um, a vector quantity by using bearings, the magnitude and the direction. But they want us to express this as a vector in the form pi plus qj horizontal and vertical component. Okay, so let's first of all make a sketch of how this looks. Um, a bearing is always measured from the north line. Okay, that's the north line. And it's always measured in the clockwise direction. It's always measured in the clockwise direction. So, what that means is, what we need to do is we need to go 150 degrees clockwise from the north line. So clockwise is in this direction. That's 90 degrees. That's 180 degrees. So 150 degrees would be something like this. It doesn't have to be accurate, but it will look something like this. That would be 150 degrees. That's like 60 degrees more than 90. So that's 150 degrees. And this is 40 kilometers per hour. So that's the magnitude and that's the direction. Now what they want is they want us to have this in terms of I and J. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a horizontal and vertical component of this vector. Okay, so this would be the horizontal component. And this would be the vertical component. Okay, so let's say that this angle here is 60 degrees because this is 90, so that must be 60 to add up to 150. And let's call this component P, and this component is going to be Q. Okay, so that's P and that's Q. Now we can see for P, this has to be um, resolved in the horizontal direction, so it's going to go into the angle, so it's going to be P times going into the angle cosine 60. Okay, you can think of it, this is the adjacent, that's the hypotenuse, so the cosine of 60 is P over 40, so P is 40 cosine 60, and for Q, this is, a, this is the opposite, so it's going to be the sine of 60 is equal to Q over 40, so Q is equal to 40 times the sine of 60. Alternatively, you could say that I'm going to be resolving in this direction here, going away from the angle, so it's going to be P, uh, 40 times uh, sine 60. So the cosine 60 is a half, so that's 40 times a half, which is 20. And for Q, you see it's going down, so it's negative. In terms of um, I and J, it's a negative, um, a negative amount. So that will be negative 40 times sine 60. Now sine 60 is root 3 over 2. So 40 times root 3 over 2, which gives you minus 20 root 3. So in terms of I and J, the velocity of B is going to be 20 I minus 20 times root 3 J. And that's the answer to part A. 
Okay. Part B. It says find expressions for R and S in terms of T, I and J. Okay, so now they tell us here um, at noon the position vector of A is 60 I J kilometers and B is at the origin O. At time T hours afternoon the position vector of A is R and the position vector of B is S. Now the position vector so R and S represent the position vector of A. So the position vector of A is R and the position vector of B is called S. Now we know that in general the position vector of any point is equal to its initial position plus its velocity times its time. So let's find for A, let's look at A, let's find its initial position and let's find its velocity. And let's do the same for B, and then we can find what we need. We need the initial position of B, and we need the velocity of B. Now, the initial position of A is given to us 60i kilometers. 60i kilometers, that's 60i. And the velocity of A is given in the beginning. The velocity of A is 20 kilometers uh, per hour due west. Due west, so 20 kilometers per hour due west. Now. We know that that's north, that's south, that's east, and that's west. So it's in the negative direction, so it's minus 20 i um, kilometers per hour. All right, so that's the, the velocity vector for, for, for A. And for B, its initial position, if you see, it says here that at noon, which is the, the, the beginning point, because T is the time after noon, um, B is at the origin. So at noon, its position vector is zero. Okay, and its velocity vector is given by what we found here, which is 20i minus, so you've got 20i minus 20 times root 3j. So the position vector of A, which is called r, is going to be r0, which is 60i, plus v times t, so it's going to be plus minus 20 i times t. So just to write and simplify, it'll be 60i minus 20 i t. Okay, you can write it like that. Okay, or um, alternatively, that's fine. That, that's, that's how they want it in terms of i, j, and t. Of course, there's zero j's here. And for b, you have, it's called s. The position vector b is, is they've told us to call it s here. Um, its initial position r0 is zero, zero, so you're going to have zero plus and you're going to have the velocity of b, which is 20i minus 20 times root 3, um, sorry, 20i minus 20 times root 3j t. Okay, so that's 20i minus 20 root 3 times j t. That's fine as your answer. That's in terms of i, j, and t. Okay, now, that's, those are our answers for this question in terms of i, j, and t, okay, for position vector of a and b. Now, I would like to just write this in terms of column vectors because it's much easier to deal with. So that's 60 minus 20t, that's the i component, and the j component here is 0. And for s, you've got 20i and minus 20 root 3 tj okay so that's your i component that's your j component all right so i've written it in terms of column vectors because um, it makes life easier to calculate for what comes next so the next part of the question part c it tells us to find the time to the nearest minute at which the distance between the boats is the same as it was at noon now if we if we see the beginning here at noon a was 60i and b was at the origin okay so that's the distance between them at noon was 60 if you can if you just picture it just say this is your origin um, just say this is your just say let's think about a pair of axes for now just say this is your origin and you know that b is at the origin and A is 60i so it's like to the east 
Okay, 60 units. So we can say at noon, the distance, the distance, oops, can't spell today, the distance AB is 60 kilometers. Okay, so we want to find the other time, or the time, so the next one, the distance again will be the same as noon. So we need to find the distance between A and B. Now, if you think about it, this is, or say this is origin, just say this is A at any time, and say this is B at any time B. Okay, so the vector from O to A is represented by our R, and the vector from O to B is represented by our vector S. Now, the distance between A and B would be found if we knew how to get from A to B or B to A. It doesn't ma make any difference. So if I did, for example, the vector from A to B, that will give me the vector of how to get from A to B. And if I found the magnitude of that vector, it will give me the distance between A and B. Okay, so the same thing would happen if I did from B to A. So if I want to find A to, find, find a to B, it would be minus R plus S. Minus R plus S. If I wanted to find the vector from B to A, it would be minus S plus R. Okay, and I think that's a bit easier here to do um, to do it that way. If you did minus S plus R, it's R minus S is a bit easier. So let me find the vector from B to A first. That's going to be um, the vector from B to A, as you can see, is minus S plus R. So it's going to be R minus S. So you take the vector R, which is 60 minus 20t, 0, and take away from it the vector s, which is 20t, and minus 20 root 3t. Okay, so if you subtract those two vectors, you're going to get 60, 60 minus 20t minus another 20t, which is 60 minus 40t, and you have 0 minus minus, which is plus 20 root 3t. Okay, as I said, I much prefer to use column vectors when I'm doing my calculations. Um, now, that is the vector from B to A. All right, we want to know when the magnitude of B to A is equal to 60, which is the same as saying when the magnitude of the square, or the, the magnitude of B to A squared is equal to 60 squared, which is 3,600. So let's find the magnitude of B to A squared. That's going to be the I component squared plus the J component squared. So this will give us uh, 3,600. So I'll have 60. Then I have 2 times 60 times minus 40 will be minus. That's 2 times 6 is 12 times 12 times 4 is 48 and 0. So 4,800 T and plus 1,600 t squared and that's plus 20 squared is 400 times root 3 squared is root is 3 and you're going to have t squared um, and then we know that that has to equal that's the magnitude of b a all squared and we know that that must equal 3600 so you have 3600 minus 4800 t um, and this is going to be 1200 t squared plus 1600 t squared, which is plus 2800 t squared. And that's equal to 3600. We see that there's all these zeros in each of them. So I divide everything by 100. Um, you're left with 36 minus 36, which will be zero. So you're left with minus 48 plus 28 t squared equals zero, 48 t, sorry. And that will give you 28t squared equals 48. If I divide everything by, I think, 4, that will give you 7t squared t. What am I saying? That's a t there. What did I put? Yeah, that's what am I doing? Sorry, there's a t here still. I'm just messing up. Ignore that for a second, sorry. So let's just uh, divide everything by 4 to make everything easier first. So you have 20, you have minus 48, which is going to give you minus 12t plus 7t squared equals 0. So we can say 7t squared minus 12t equals 0. If we factorize this, you get t and then you get 7t minus 12 
equals zero. So the solutions to this are t equals zero, which we know that's the time equals zero, they were 60 kilometers apart. Um, that's what we were told at noon. And the other time would be when 7t minus 12 equals zero, so 7t equals 12. So t is equal to 12 over seven. Now the question tells us to find the answer as a time. It says find the time to the nearest minute. So we got to transfer this into a time. Now t is the time after noon. Okay, so the time is 12 over seven, which is the same as one hour or one whole hour and five twelfths, five um, sevenths of an hour. Okay, yeah. That's seven, that's right. Okay, so one and five sevenths of an hour. So that's one hour and five sevenths of an hour. Well, let's take a calculator and take the fraction five over seven, five over seven, and we multiply it by 60. That will give us the answer in, in minutes. That gives us 42.857, one hour and 42.857. 42.857. Minutes. So the time that we're looking for to the nearest minute is one hour after midday. So that's going to be 1300 hours and to the nearest minute 43, 1343. Or if you want to make it in terms of PM, 143 PM. Both of these would be acceptable answers. And there we have the answer to question number eight. Thank you for watching.